What is going on beautiful people? It is 5.30 in the morning and there has already been way too much drama in the studio for my liking. So I've walked in this morning and the discus tank lights have pretty much just come on and I'm looking at the top of the tank all the fish are sort of at the surface looking vertical and I'm thinking there's no way they've all got swim bladder issues. What is going on? Why is everyone vertical? Gulping at the surface for air and I start thinking there's something wrong with the tank straight away. So what I do is I take a water sample. It's important in these situations to make sure you, you know, understand what actually went wrong if there's something wrong rather than just changing the water quickly because you don't, you might just do it again. So I've then taken the water samples, put them to the side and immediately done like a 75% water change fish are absolutely fine again now so um, I was baffled what what on earth's going on so if we fast forward 15 minutes later the test results are in and I'm even more baffled <laughs> so we are currently reading zero ammonia zero nitrite and about 15 ppm of nitrates which is absolutely perfect for a tank like this full of plants so my first initial thought was that something must have died in the tank causing an ammonia spike I mean that's what it had to be right they're just you know gill function wasn't great because the ammonia maybe some burn going on surely that's what it is but as we've just seen the ammonia levels are at zero so it definitely isn't that now there's one thing that i did notice and that's when i first came in the um you see the surface skimmers there you see how they're just pulling water in so you can see just by the outlet next to it right there look they're just sucking in water constantly and keeping that surface clean well they were clogged they had like small dead leaves that had broken off all of the plants they were just sort of all around the surface or the top of it and it was stopping it functioning properly and in fact there wasn't any surface skimming happening at all so if nothing's breaking the surface of the tank and you've got an absolute ton of plants in there it can mean only one thing so i vaguely remembered right at the back of my mind reading somewhere that plants use oxygen at night so they convert co2 in a day and produce oxygen and at night time it's sort of flipped around. So then I put two and two together with no surface agitation and plants using all the oxygen, they were gasping for air because of low dissolved oxygen in the water. Now the reason I'm telling you all this is just to make sure that you guys are aware of it if you've got a planted tank and you didn't know this. I didn't really know it. I mean, I, apparently I did, but I completely forgot. Plants use oxygen at night. If there's no surface agitation, lots of plants, the water's just going to not have any oxygen in no time at all. So it's all right saying that this was a one-off accident. It shouldn't happen again because of those plants, but it might happen again. There's a lot of plants in here. So I need to come up with some contingency plan just in case. So if you watched the last vlog, you would have seen that I took down the lake tank. Now, first job today was going to be to sort of fix it all, but had to deal with the issues that we had. That's what it's like running a fish room. You just don't know what you're going to come into each day. So deal with the most thing that's priority first. Does that make sense? Yeah. Anyway, in this tank, we have got a nice little power head that is looking absolutely disgusting at the moment. We'll sort that out. But it's a nice little power head that doesn't produce a absolute ton of flow, but it also is controllable so I can turn it down. Now, I think Think that'll work perfectly in this tank i'm probably gonna stick it somewhere in that back corner or somewhere around these inlet and outlet just so it's not so obvious have it blowing across the front but pointing it upwards and that should always keep surface agitation then even if the skimmers fail they shouldn't really fail but i just put a load of new plants in here didn't i and any like leaves that weren't perfect just sort of go off and new growth comes which is happening already look at how good the rotala is looking there uh, all of it's just growing brilliantly considering the fact that i've only just planted it look look at this rotala i'll put it up on the screen um you can see all the new growth already new growth old growth so we've had a good inch within like a week no co2 tank remember i'm really pleased with that i mean i'm not pleased that this these plants are using all of our oxygen up but um no i'm not feeding you again you were over here just two seconds ago so this is their safe place like i always say to you guys and um, if i do any kind of fiddling with the tank like water um changing the water that sort of thing zoom, straight down in this bottom corner but they'll come back out in a minute i mean all i have to do is this watch this tap so i'll tap here Hello guys, <laughs> oh, I feel bad now. I will feed you in a bit. I mean, it's super early, but you're clearly hungry. You have had a little stressful morning, guys, haven't you? I am sorry about that. We'll make sure that, no, no, I'm talking to, we'll make sure it won't happen again. <laughs> and like I say, guys, I'm just mentioning this in case you didn't know it. There'll be many of you with big planted tanks, CO2 systems, that kind of thing that will already know this, but I didn't. And I mean, I think it is quite a common occurrence 
uh, with a CO2 system is that in the, in the night time a ton of oxygen is used because there's so much plant growth but this is the most planted tank I've probably ever had you know so this is new to me um, we learn from these things shared experience with you Hopefully you guys won't make the mistake, same mistake, but thankfully there is no real damage done. To be honest, I'm just really relieved that I get up at four o'clock every morning and get in here super early because if I just woke up like a normal person and come here at eight o'clock, they might actually be dead. So there's one for you. Get up early and save things. <laughs> anyway, the water's all sorted, all clean. Fish are looking great. Let's get that powerhead fitted. Well, there we go. That is a lot of surface agitation, isn't it? I just need to be careful though. We're not breaking the, the surface of the aquarium, obviously, because that would just flood, wouldn't it? <laughs> but also we need to watch out that the plants aren't going crazy. Now, because of the angle that we've got a good sway going over, over here and in the back corner there, but they're not getting all tangled up. They're not getting pushed around silly. It's just a gentle wave look to everything. If I stay still, you see it. But yeah, I think that's perfect. I'm going to leave it as it is. I was going to turn it down, but there's no need to. I mean, that's perfect. The more flow, the better without disturbing the plants. That's what that's what I go for nowadays. If the flow is disturbing the plants too much, it can look rubbish. Let me show you an example. So I've shown you in the previous vlog this tank. This is the ecosystem aquarium. Look what happens when the flow is so much that it just sort of blasts the plants. They twist around each other, stem plants do. It's happened in this section and it's also happened in these sections at the back. Um, I could just change the filter out and put something you know, less powerful and it still worked just as well. But also I don't want to upset anything. Do you know what I mean? It's going so, so well that it, I'm fine just to let it do that. And let's face it, there's a lot of flow in a river system where most of these plants are from, isn't there? I'll tell you what though, since I've trimmed back this Rotala, it's grown back so nice. Look at that. Look at the thickness of it and the brightness. Great, great stuff. Oh, and also the uh, trident's coming back as well. This stuff actually died off down here. I'm not entirely sure why it did, but it, it just wilted right back. And now it's all growing back, which is great. That, that means that that stuff that grows back is like bulletproof. It's <laughs> so good. I can use that in another scape or something as well. Because at some point, this one will be coming down. I'm going to do another one in this one as well. But we'll wait six months like I do with most of my, with my tanks. My big ones, six months. Well, apart from this one, which wasn't six months, was it? But <laughs> it's because I wasn't happy with it. And also another good thing about having this higher flow is that all of the crud now, look, I can see it all, it's just floating particles. It might be hard to pick up the camera, but there's floating particles everywhere at the moment of all the crud just coming up into the water column. So obviously that's gonna make its way around the tank and be picked up by the filters, which means the water quality will be even better. Now it's not so fast that the fish are like getting blown around at all, because down there, look, if the plants aren't getting blown around, you know that the fish aren't. If there'll be a decent amount of flow right up here in this top section, right near it, but that's about it. It's just angle breaking the surface. By the time it's over here, the flow's pretty dissipated. I mean, these fish are from a river, so <laughs> rivers are fast flowing. Very, very fast. Well, these fish aren't because they're captive bred. You don't see fish like this in the wild, do you? Oh, I'll tell you what, one good thing is though, now we've got another power head in here, I can put the food into it and that'll blast it around the tank for all the fish to be able to enjoy. Let's do that. Oh yeah, they're definitely not worried about that power head at all. They were right in front of it there, I and mean, still, it still doesn't even push them. And you would have thought, being the fact that they're shaped like discs, side on, they're the least, um, it's not aerodynamics, is it? The water dynamics. <laughs> they should have, I was expecting them just to get pushed, but no, they didn't at all, not bothered. But look at that. These are really good for just getting a flake or any food, to be honest. It just spreads all around the tank, small particles, all the fish can see it, it and it keeps it moving. It didn't just settle and get clogged up in one area. Look, we can see all the quarries are out now as well. These are the bronze quarries. Uh, there's an albino. <laughs> Where is the uh, sturbi? I just saw them at the back. They're not come forward yet. The, the sturbi's are always quite secretive. There's one. There he is. Look at that stunner. 
I might get some more. Should I get some more stir buys? Just get like an army of 20 of them or something just going all around this tank. That would look so good, wouldn't it? Yeah, so, so pleased with how it's all still going. Look at the nymphoides there. Look, I told you it gets huge. It's going to get even bigger than that as well. I'm going to have to make sure I keep on top of the trimming with that one. All the stem plants look new tips looking so, so good. It won't be long now though before this tank's actually due another trim up. And this time I'm going to hack it right back as well. So back at the Neon Tech... <coughs> <clears throat> so back at the neon. <laughs> if you remember in the last video, the last vlog, I showed you that the gloss of stigma was sort of melting away. Now this is down to a lighting issue. There's nowhere near enough light to get the plant to grow. It's a very cheap light at the end of the day. So I've swapped it out for the Monte Carlo, which is already looking really good. And it's starting to grow horizontally straight away. So it's trying to anchor down into the sand, which is great. It should look good in no time. The reason I'm bringing this up is because I recently did the Platy Mountain Scape and the same thing started to happen to the Glossy Stigma over there as well. So yeah, just to show you, this is the Monte Carlo and the Jungle Scape look. It's starting to go downwards and it's trying to creep rather than going upwards. This is really good. It means there's enough light. It means it's going to do well. But over at the Platy Tank, so we are currently going through a proper diatom phase, completely normal in a new setup. But if you take a look at some of the plants on the top here, look, um, they're growing really well. New tips to the pearlweed, brand new tips as well to the Rotala Hra. And down below, look, the um, Glossa Stigma started to die out. Ignore all the sort of brown and yellow stuff. That's the diatom algae. You can see it like there. And uh, look at the sand, it's gone sort of an off white and bits of the rocks. This will pass. We can even give it a brush up by hand in a moment. But yeah, look at the Glossa Stigma. It's actually starting to recover now. So what happened? I did have this light hung, you're gonna pick it up, so on these, so it was like that much higher, which meant that the top plants were getting just enough light and growing really well. Everything down the bottom was dying off, including the hair grass. So I've lowered it by that amount, which actually gives it the full depth now, and it, everything's starting to recover. So look, that glosso is looking nice and green, how it should do. It's been pulled out a bit because the bits that were dying off, the platys have been constantly pecking at them. So they've been eating the sort of decaying matter, which is actually really good because you can't see any now because they've cleaned it all up. But this will recover, it's brilliant. So yeah, if you're gonna use Glosso, make sure you've got a powerful enough light. So when I've had success in it in the past, I've remembered I've always done it with decent lighting on like nano tanks, but this should be absolutely fine now. I'm gonna give this tank a good old clean up and then I'm gonna add a few Ottos and some Amano shrimp as well. They'll get this clean in no time then. So that's the tank looking pretty fresh again, but like I say, I want to get those critters in there. I want to get the Amano shrimp. Maybe I'll add some snails as well. There's no snails in this tank. I don't know why I didn't add any. I just completely forgot. I'll get a couple of Ottos as well. Not too many because um, I probably just want three. There's, it's not going to be a huge amount of food for them in no time at all, to be honest, because they're going to clean this up. Within days, it'll all be gone. So this tank here is one that I just use for propagating moths, to be honest. <laughs> There's so much in there. Uh, I just take trimmers of it and attach it to the new setups when I want to. But there's quite a few autos sort of dotted around as well. And we've got a good good amount of Amano shrimp in there. Um, so I can take a few of those and it won't affect the scape at all. I mean, there's barely any algae being produced anyway. So actually these guys will fatten up a little bit more in the new, in the new scape. Right, so we've got the little critters. I've got five Amanos, three Ottos, and a Neurite snail, and a tiny little bladder snail. I'm gonna add some more snails as I go and collect them up. First of all, I wanna get these guys in. Now, temperature-wise, all my tanks are matching because I heat the room, so these can go straight in. And straight away, look, we're getting to work. Good boys and girls. Actually, when I clicked stop on the on the camera then, I picked the uh, jug out of the water and there was still a load of Amanos attached. I didn't even realise. So, yeah, I put them back in though. And there is one of them now. Look, straight on that rock, pecking away. They'll clear this whole lot in no time at all. It should be looking really good within a few days. Well, either that or everything will melt completely. 
I don't think that'll happen. <laughs> So it's been like quite a few hours now since I added the additional flow to the discus tank. They definitely like it way more. I'm not even kidding you. They're all over the tank. They're going everywhere all the time. And I see them sort of dancing in and out of it, like doing this. I've never seen them really doing that before, apart from when I had a powerhead ages ago. I didn't have it in there for too long though because it was a big, loud, a cheap one. This is actually a half decent one. It's silent, so. But yeah, I don't know if you can see them behind me, but just look at them. They're all over the place. Seem to be loving it. So really good decision to put that in. I was a little bit worried that the Discus wouldn't like it having had such a sort of, you know, really low flow tank for quite a while, to be honest. But yeah, loving it. Really good choice. And it's just another one of those things that seems to go against what's said online. If you read online about Discus, low flow tanks, you know, they don't like it. That's not true. Look at this guy. Look at him. Does he look like someone who doesn't like it? <laughs> and them as well, look, they're right next to it, not bothered at all. So yeah, it just goes to show guys, you know, not everything you read is always like 100% truthful. Um, it's just someone's experience with something. So like, this is my experience so far. I mean, it's still only days, obviously, but from what I can gather, they are liking that and uh, we'll stick with it for the time being. Look, see, when is this happening before? Every time you look at them, they'll be over there because they'll be used to me being there, but um, they seem to be getting around the tank more. Maybe they didn't just like standing over there and watching me edit. <laughs> I suppose it could be that the flow has made the environment feel a little bit different so they want to go and explore. Either way, it's a type of enrichment, isn't it? And they, they seem really happy, so I'm happy.